Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Troop from Troop Talks. New beanie from Troop from Troop Talks. And today we are here to preview the London game week 8 of the NFL season. The Jaguars are officially midway through their 2018 campaign. And boy, what a year it's been. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tree from BigJReport.com. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Philadelphia Eagles week number 8 preview. So like I alluded to in the intro, this game is going to be in London. So your boy is getting up at about 5.45 in the morning to go live for this game that is going to take place at 6.30 because I'm going to make the drive to my parents' house uh, to watch this stream, or, I mean to watch this game. We're going to do a little bit of a test. I am th- We are 3-1 and one when I go over to my parents' house to stream games, and unfortunately we're 0-2 oh when I stream games at my own house. So it's a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to have to get up a tad, a lot of tad, bit earlier uh, for this game, but you know what? We're going to try to do anything that could swing the momentum in the Jags' favor because God knows we need it and we need it bad. But first and foremost, let's go over the offense and what they need to do well in order to win this game. Blake Bortles, you're on a very, very short leash, and I think he knows that. Uh, Cody Kessler went out there, I believe went 21 for about 33 uh, during his time when he was playing with the Jags as their quarterback, went 1-1, one and one, and the interception wasn't even necessarily his fault. He went out there and he showed what he could do, and he did good. Uh, whether that be because it was kind of towards some garbage time or because the Texans were playing uh, some the certain zone defense and Cody Kessler was able to complete the easy passes. But that's neither here nor there. So the team kind of now knows that they have a backup quarterback that if his name is called, he has a lot of confidence. He's going to go out there and he's going to make plays uh, for the Jags. And Blake Bortles should know that and should really understand that his job is certainly in trouble, not just for now, but definitely by the end of the season, uh, whether that would be getting a guy in free agency or drafting a guy. Uh, Blake Bortles really needs to improve his play in order for all the Jags fans to come back around and join on to the boat train. The boat train. Nice. Let's just say so everybody can hop back onto the boat. Uh, I think that sounds a little bit better. The Blake is still my guy. Like, I've said publicly on here that I think that he doesn't deserve to be our quarterback, and right now he kind of doesn't, but he's still my boy, you know? Like, I still want to see him succeed, so I'm hoping that he goes out there, does great things for us, and is able to be our quarterback. He does play well in London almost every single time he's out there. So we'll see what he can do uh, against Philadelphia. This is also one of the more uh, intense battles that we've ever had in London. I remember we played Buffalo a couple of years ago, I believe in 2016, and Bortles led us. Uh, to a victory drive on that one, hitting Alan Hearns in the end zone. So hopefully this this week, uh, Blake can show that he is great in London, one of the better quarterbacks to ever play down there uh, in London. So he needs to go out there and do that. And I think he knows he's on a short leash, especially because, you know, the media is giving it to him, the fans are giving it to him, you know, everything like that. And like I said, we got a young, hungry guy on the bench that's ready to take your job uh, at a moment's notice. Now, as far as the offensive line goes, they need to have a day because this Philadelphia defensive line ain't no joke. They get after quarterbacks. They have one of the best defensive lines, uh, probably second second or third best defensive line, uh, in my honest opinion. And uh, the offensive line, though there's a lot of injuries, they really need to protect Blake Bortles because um, part of Blake's struggles is because he's not getting protected very well. And honestly, if you if you don't think that, then you're literally just the biggest Blake Bortles hater in the entire world because he has absolutely zero protection back there. He has no time to throw the ball. Not to say that all of his bad throws aren't on Blake himself, but with that also being said, this offensive line is not doing him any favors whatsoever. And going up against this defensive line, they're going to have to step up. <clears throat> they did well in the first half against Houston's defensive line, the duo of Davion Clowney and uh, J.J. Watt. Did all right to start the game, but then towards the end, they really fell off. And this week, you know, you got studs all over this defensive line, and every single one of the offensive linemen have to step up in order for the Jags to win this game, whether that be in the run game or the pass game, but especially, especially the pass game. Let's keep Blake Bortles up. Let's make sure he doesn't have any pressure in his face. Knock on wood, because we have an offensive line 
that is struggling and is not that great and uh, is obviously hurt. So, you know, we got to... We really got to stay optimistic as far as that goes. So the offensive line is really the two people, the two positions that we really can't rely on too hard are the two positions that need to step up uh, in a big way this week more than about anybody else uh, on this Jaguars football team. So this offensive line and Blake Bortles really, really need to improve and show up uh, as we take on the Eagles in London. Now let's go. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Uh, we're going to see Carlos Hyde and what he's going to be able to offer us. Uh, he's a power back. You know, he gets the ball, he goes downhill, and he does what he needs to do. Uh, I looked it up. I don't believe he's ever had a 1,000-yard rushing season, but he's always been a consistent running back. Uh, he's always – I've actually had him on my fantasy team for a couple of years, and he does good fantasy numbers. So, you know, this guy is a red zone machine. He gets a lot of touchdowns. Um, and like I said, he runs well in between the tackles and between the guards. You know, he does he does about exactly what Leonard Fournette does. So, you know, I think that's what the Jags were missing. TJ Yeldon is not a power back. So, you know, this offense kind of felt like they needed to pass the ball more. But now with the addition of Carlos Hyde uh, via trade from the uh, Cleveland Browns, I think that this brings a lot of uh, excitement to the offense and a lot of famili familiarity as far as that goes with uh, how we do things when Leonard Fournette's around. And hopefully Carlos Hyde can get some uh, get some juice to him because, you know, if Leonard comes back, we got Hyde, Leonard, and Yeldon, and that's a great three-headed monster heading down the stretch, especially after the bye week. The Jags kind of have an easier schedule. And if we are just able to pound the rock with those three studs, then we are going to be on the up and up. But hopefully, that's all I'm saying, is Carlos Hyde, he shows up, he shows what he can be, and hopefully he's a good player and a reliable guy uh, for the Jags moving forward in 2018. Now, as far as the wide receivers go, I said it last week, just do the simple things right and you couldn't do that. That's all you really need to do in order for us to do well this week because I really think the emphasis on the run game this week is going to be heavy more so than any other week uh, of the season, especially when we didn't have Leonard Fournette. Uh, you know, and that's what I'm saying. You know, since we haven't had Leonard Fournette, you know, Blake's been throwing the ball. He's had three three weeks in a row where he had career high in passing yards, and last week he was throwing the ball quite a bit as well. Uh, the run game couldn't get going. TJ Yeldon only had 12 carries on the day. So the wide receivers, like, when you get your opportunity and you get your number called, catch the ball. Keelan Cole especially, he leads the league in drops, and this guy was supposed to be our stud. He was supposed to be the number one wide receiver. Last year showed a whole lot of promise, but this year is just suddenly going downhill. Dante Moncrief, though, he's been reliable. Like I said, this is a guy I shit on a lot early on in the season, but he's gone out there and he's proved that he's a reliable guy, you know, a veteran presence, so to speak, uh, in this Jaguars locker room. You know, very reliable, kind of catches the ball. He does some good things after the catch as well. Um... So these wide receivers, like I said, just they need to do the basic things. They need to catch the ball. They need to be able to advance the ball and, you know, stay ahead of the sticks, making sure that we get first downs. Uh, we're not asking you to go down the field and catch fucking 40-yard bombs because hopefully that's not the game plan. But if that's so, if that happens, you know, like on a second down, we take a shot play, catch the ball if it's in your radius, man. Just that's all I got to say to these wide receivers. And you would think that they would just do it because it's in the name. I mean, that's what wide receivers do. But just catch the fucking football. That's all you have to do. Do the simple things well, and uh, hopefully we will be successful. Now that I'm saying this, though, um, <clears throat> the Eagles are a great football team, and this game has got me really, really nervous, especially from the way uh, the Jags have been playing. Now, as far as the defense goes, it's going to be another battle with our defensive line against a really solid uh, offensive line as well. The Eagles have one of the better offensive lines uh, in the league as of right now, and, you know, this defensive line that we currently have is kind of underachieving, and we really need to get home this week. We really need to show what what and how elite this defense really is because, you know, like I said, we've been talking all this shit throughout the offseason, got the fans really excited, and I'm sure you guys got really excited. But, you know, you guys just have not been showing it uh, on the field. Yannick Ngakwe is saying he's the best pass rusher in the league. It's not showing. He only has four sacks, you know, that things like that, little things that uh, they were talking about in the offseason that they haven't showed. And they really need to step up and show it now because we're at the midway point of the season, and if you're not going to start showing it now, then the Jags are going to tank, and it's going to be a bad season for the boys, and that's all I'm saying. So the defensive line, they need to get after it, make sure Carson Wentz is panicked to throw the ball. Uh, but another key thing 
for this defense. And the final thing we're going to be talking about is the secondary can't play off coverage and they need to have a great day because A.J. Boye is not playing this week. That being said, Quentin Meeks is going to be starting in front of him. Tyler Patman also not playing. Trey Herndon, as well as Ronnie Harrison, are probably going to be sharing the nickel corner reps. So Jalen Ramsey, truly the only uh, guy out there, something that we're not used to seeing uh, ever since, you know, before we had Jalen, uh, A.J. Boye, and before we had A.J. Boye, Jalen Ramsey was just a rookie out there. So, you know, Jalen's really got to have to step up and, you know, really lead these young uh, cornerbacks and show them what to do and make sure that they're doing their job right because this could be a big day for Carson Wentz because this secondary is banged up. The safeties as well need to help out uh, deep over the top to make sure nothing happens. And, you know, we got two reliable young safeties in, uh, well, not young, but two reliable safeties in Sean Gibson as well as Barry Church. And Ronnie Harrison, I'm sure, is going to get some reps also at the safety position as well as the uh, nickel corner position. So I'm excited to see what he can do as well. So this Jaguar team really just needs to put together a 2017 game in order to beat the Eagles in London in 2018. And that was my Jacksonville Jaguars versus Philadelphia Eagles week number eight preview. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you are feeling oh so generous and you want to get exclusive Troop Talks content, don't forget you can donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Treeb Talks. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified. Every single time I drop a new video, I drop new Jaguar content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Those are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.